raise your hands if you're dealing with difficult people in your life okay now those of you who do not raise your hands you are those difficult people that's important <laughs> look around there they are it's you how many people here have ever been right you know who you are come on right really right how many of you been so right nobody would talk to you that kind of right I explained how right I was how wrong he was and I was so convincing he agreed <laughs> yeah and then he he quit <laughs> went to work for the competition now later that week when I was forced to clean out my desk it dawned on me it dawned on me maybe I want to be effective rather than just right so if you think that your boss is stupid when your boss is just smart enough to be your boss okay Keep that <clears throat> If you criticize others' ideas, they'll almost never use yours, no matter how good they are. And I was a 27-year-old Fortune 500 company department head. They developed a special term for me. It's called punk manager. Punk hyphen manager. <laughs> oh, here comes the punk manager. The definition of leadership is someone following someone because they want to and not because they have to. That's leadership. Child comes up to you and says, Daddy, I made a decision, I'm going to go ahead and dye my hair green and get that big neck tattoo, eyebrow ring, nose ring, lip ring, big black makeup, long black fingernails, weird hair, that bustier thing, whatever that is, short skirt, fishnet stockings. I said, son, there's no way you're leaving the house like that. So. Our own behavior, our old behavior, and behavior that we don't understand takes up a lot of free rent in our hands. A lot of free rent. We think about that all the time. Sometimes it's our judgments that give us the biggest problem. We meet people, we judge them in the first 10 or 15 seconds, and they feel judged. And when they feel judged, they don't feel heard. And we're never going to be able to be leaders of these people. Never. Your ability to manage and deal with people you don't like will define your greatness. Come face to face with somebody who is very different. Now I was driving through Texas one day and I was trying to get back to Houston and I was lost. And then I looked at him and I, I said it, I used the D word. I said, are you dumb? <laughs> so you know something, son, I ain't the smartest man around these parts, but then again, boy, I ain't lost neither. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Every single human being you will ever meet for the rest of your life knows something you don't and don't ever forget it. Sometimes you're face to face with somebody. You're just face to face with them and you have to look at them and do this. Look, I disagree with you, but I'm willing to listen. I disagree, but tell me more. They feel like it's good. People buy into anything because they have a good feeling that they're going to make the right decision with this person. You listen to people and they feel heard and not judged, they will typically choose you and what you say and do over somebody else, sometimes regardless of any other criteria. Now, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about men and women. How many of you think men and women are different? <laughs> Apparently just this side for some reason. I don't know what that's about. I'm gonna write a book. Yep. And it's called Men Are From Mars and Women Are Not Impressed. That's right. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? We have people who are 55 years old with a mouse in their hand going, what the heck happened to my life? What is this? This is weird. Now, come on, you know it is. Isn't that just weird? My dad, damn it. That's what my dad does. Where is that thing going now? What does a completely dark screen mean? Oh, it's off. It's off. Okay. It's not about that the world has passed you by as far as your genius or your knowledge or your talent is concerned. It's just the tools. If you didn't know how to use a shovel and you've been digging a hole with your hands all your life, can you compete? No. You can be the best hand hole digging guy in town. <laughs> but this person with the shovel is just going to outproduce you. Oh, yeah. Feeling good. Driving down the road. Life is going to pull right up next to a brand new red Lamborghini. And it dawns on me, I'm driving, he's a junk, I got a crummy job, I got nothing going, I got nothing going. I got nothing. I look out the window next to me, what do I see parked next to me? <laughs> a 73 gremlin. Loser, you're a loser! <laughs> the guy in the Lamborghini is looking back at me, 
and he just wishes he had a full head of hair. That's all he wants. <laughs> I'm looking back at him going, I'll go half bald to the car. I'll go to here for the car. Right there. Now, the guy in the grim is looking back at both of us going, sure, I'm glad I'm not working. Woo! Woo! <laughs> McDonald's and onto a nap is my day. That's where I'm going. We have a tendency to, uh, to judge our insides by other people's outsides. I'm going to judge how I feel by the way you look. Anyway, um, we have a choice. We have a choice. You see, I, for instance, choose not to eat spam. Some reasons for that. You ever read the back of a can of Spam and read that? Oh, man. It says, may contain three or more of the following ingredients. And that means they don't know. They don't know. It may not contain that. We don't know. You know that gelatin-like substance they used to slide it into the can? Yeah. I just refuse to eat any food that comes with its own lubricant. There's no way. No way. No way. Vienna sausage? Come on. Was he on a subpoena sausage? <laughs> this whole area right here, you guys, man. <laughs> Somebody cook something for over here for some <laughs> Good Lord. Got a whole canned meat section right there. It's amazing. I have a choice. I can slide through the cracks of life with all the losers and the victims and poor me and the market did it and there was bad information and the internet people were wacky and the dot coms are dumb and all this stuff. Or I can stand firm and make the well-informed decisions I've paid for with my life experience. It's not just about learning from our mistakes. It's about not being so afraid to make those mistakes. Because somebody's going to tell you one day, hey, how'd you get so good at what you do? You say, well, I made every mistake I could possibly make, and there was nothing left to do but succeed. <laughs> so get out there and do it. Hang in there. Now's the time. Now's the time. I'm Garrison Wynn. Thank you so much. Thank you.